We sat down with the Foxborough Fire Department to discuss the recent acquisitions of two fire trucks from almost 100 years ago and their efforts to restore them. Um, the Aaron's Fox was something of legend. Um, everybody would talk about it. It's in pictures in our halls and a uh, very beautiful fire truck that there was a few stories about what had happened to it and that, you know, so they had sold it when it, at it when it hit its end of service life and that somebody had owned it and had let it go to auction and somebody had bought it at auction and that it was somewhere in the Midwest. Some of our members back about 15 years ago, I was I just got on the fire department and I remember a couple of our members um, retired Captain Healy, retired firefighter Thrasher and I'm sure and I know I'm forgetting a few others. Um, they started a quest to start looking for the um, 1938 Aaron's Fox. It's always been a uh, staple of the department. It was our department's first white truck and everybody always had the desire to bring the truck back to Foxborough. Flash ahead to about two years ago. So I went into our union files and, and tracked everything down, compiled a new set of paperwork and was able to uh, trace down the gentleman's new phone number, got in touch with him and had a few different conversations over the period of a couple of weeks that ended with him saying, you know what, I'm 67 now, I have grandchildren, I always wanted to restore that truck, I never did. It sounds like you guys will, why don't you just take it? So he ended up donating it back to us and we were able to flatbed it back here and surprise everybody with it, which was pretty cool. Uh, the Red Engine 1, so that's a 1928 Maxim, um, it's actually kind of unique now. The 1928 Maxim was our last red truck and the 1938 Fox is our first white truck. So it's kind of a you know interesting transition um, that we were able to acquire both of them. We knew that Engine 1, the 1928 Maxim, was owned by uh, one of our retired call lieutenants, uh, Ralph Bennett, um, and we knew he was always in a, a certain, um, certain degree of restoration. Um, all of a sudden, one day uh, on Facebook Marketplace, um, we saw it pop up for sale. Were you selling it? We reached out to him, said, hey, Ralph, we'd love to come take a look at the truck. And uh, myself and Owen went out um, that week to, uh, to look at the truck and we were able to uh, get some fundraising together to buy the truck back off of uh, um, retired Lieutenant uh, Bennett and bring it back to Foxborough. I think that getting these two um, these two pieces of fire apparatus back, you know, not only I, I think it's important to the town, but it's important to the uh, firefighters here because it's a piece of history you can actually touch. It's actually working history. You know, to think about some of the, the people that worked on those vehicles and uh, the conditions, it's it's fascinating. So I know that people are really excited to get them get them back and get them up and running and be able to showcase them for the for the townspeople. Uh, firefighters are very nostalgic um, as a uh, as a breed or a uh, or as a career profession. And um, if you talk to any firefighter, they'll always talk about you know maybe the first uh, fire truck, or the first ladder truck they were on. Um, you know the the apparatus. It's not just a vehicle. It's almost like a member of the department. Um, and that's not just here in Foxborough. That's pretty much across the country. So um, you know having these two trucks, um, you know, back when we got when the town got rid of them, they were just old trucks. Um, not a big deal. It's a 30, 40 year old truck. It's no longer, it no longer serves our purposes, uh, send it along its way. Um, as, uh, you know, as a membership starts, you know, remembering the stories back or looking at old historic photos, um, everybody tends to get excited about some of these old apparatus because it's not just seen as an old truck, it's seen as a former or uh, current member of our organization. So, you know, bringing these trucks back home um, means a lot because it's not just a vehicle, it's, uh, it's truly a member of the organization and a member of the town as a whole. Uh, there's a small group of us that are working on it. Um, we reestablished, so the fire department had a, an association. So um, there was the union and the association. The association did a lot of uh, um, field days, kind of events for the firefighters themselves. Uh, the, uh, a lot of the firefighters' wives would run it uh, way back when. Um, now um, 
the association kind of went dormant for probably 15, 20 years with these trucks coming back. We kind of uh, resurrected it, uh, got it back going again, and, um, and uh, there's probably eight of us on the, uh, that are active in the association right now that are constantly working on, on the trucks. So, um, you know, it's kind of a group effort. effort. We all talk uh, back and forth with each other about uh, what needs to be done, some uh, short-term goals, if body panels need to be bolted on, if we need to line up vendors um, for some work. We've been really, really, really fortunate with a few vendors being able to uh, donate a lot of their services, which really helped the project uh, along. It wouldn't have been possible without them. That's definitely been a team effort in a lot of ways, um, driven by Captain Pantini. Um, he's taken on a lot of the physical projects of restoration in-house. Um, I've focused on the more mechanical aspects of the restoration. Um, we did have to obtain some outside help with doing a brake job and creating a new drive shaft because the vehicle is so old that parts don't exist, so they have to be fabricated. So it's not enough to just have a shop or a lift or a big set of tools. You have to be able to fabricate certain parts and have a machine that can actually make brake shoes and stuff like that. So we outsourced a few of the specific projects on the Maxim, but then did a large amount of the mechanical restoration in-house as well as um, in those days, a lot of that truck was actually wood. So Captain Pantini and Lieutenant Sweeney kind of took the, the forefront of doing a lot of woodwork around that truck to create new bed rails and all the side rails and steps are actually wood covered in uh, battleship linoleum. So they did a lot of that work. It was like a lot of man hours put into that. I applaud the efforts of all the uh, all the individuals involved. They you know they give their own time. It's all it's all done volunteer. Um, you know the work that went into the, the Red Maxim was all you know done in house. A lot of it you know donated labor, uh, leveraging personal relationships to get things welded or get things like you know done. So it's 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 you know it's definitely a, a team effort. But you know there was a lot of um, extra time that. That was that was donated, and like I said, it's really it's it's uh, it's, and it's a morale booster for us too. I think it's nice that you know that's part of what makes us an attractive place to work is our connection with our past. You know, I think when you know when you know who you are, you you really you know you can kind of it really gives you a, a boost in your in your confidence, and you know when you, you know where you're going, you know you know you, that's part of our values. So when you look at our past, you know that dovetails right into our connection with the community. Having the privilege of restoring an ancient vehicle that salutes men and their families with that kind of relationship in our community, I think that we speak well for our generation because what we do, our biggest privilege, I believe, is to take what they built for us and pass it forward, rebuild and pass to future generations so that that story carries. And I think it would be nice if everybody in Foxborough had a deep sense of the sacrifice made by the men and women who serve our first responders. So far, uh, the majority of fundraising has been sort of in-house, kind of, you know, smaller things. Like we had, a, we had a snowblower raffle over the winter, which did pretty well. And then more recently, the Foxborough JCs have actually helped us out a couple of times, uh, pretty immensely. Some a couple of awesome con contributions from them. Um, Founders Day, they rented us a dunk tank um, from Differentials here in Foxborough, and uh, so me, my girlfriend Alyssa, and a couple other guys, we just ran it that day. And uh, you know, kids coming up and dunking firefighters and uh, dunking firefighters kids and stuff. It was a really fun day, and it actually it was a good day for us fundraising wise as well. 
And then a couple Sundays ago, uh, the JCs had their car show uptown where they closed the road and they had a bunch of you know old cars come through. And um, me and Lieutenant Sweeney, Colin, uh, were up there. We sold cheeseburgers. We did a 50-50 raffle. So that was kind of uh, another great way for us to make money. Stop and Shop donated the food. And it was a really fun, nice event. People got to come by and see the Maxim uh, Engine 1, which is the our last red fire truck. And uh, so far, it's been stuff like that, kind of smaller than what we'll eventually need to reach our final goal, especially fixing up the Fox, but uh, certainly a good start for us. So we were able to, uh, we, we hired a lawyer and uh, we went through sort of federal and state, you know, the sort of the tax staircase there to become a recognized uh, nonprofit charitable organization, 501c3 recognized organization. Um, so the Friends of Foxborough Fire, which is the association's name, is now a tax, tax exempt organization. So we'll be able to sort of more, you know, officially and more, you know, effectively solicit donations on that basis because, you know, larger donations, they don't want to have to pay a tax on that sort of, you know, counterintuitive for a lot of those things. So um, places will be a lot happier to see that we're a recognized charity. You know, we've gone through the process. We have a goal in mind. You know, we've proven it to both the Secretary of State and the IRS that we are a charitable organization. And we have this goal in mind of fixing up these historical pieces. And then from there, you know, we'll uh, hopefully be able to do a lot of other different great things for the town. But I think uh, more grants, things like that, uh, there's people out there that will give you grants for fixing up classic cars or, you know, historical society type stuff. So I think that's probably where we're going we're to shift our focus moving forward. And I think that's going to take all of us in the association. So I am not the technical expert. That's definitely Owen and Andrew and uh, even the chief, like they'll know a lot more than I will about that stuff. But I've heard, you know, anywhere from a quarter million dollars to $300,000, something like that to fix up the Aaron's Fox, because that's going to be, you know, significant work, significant time, and it's going to take somebody that's not one of us. It'll take somebody that kind of specializes in something like that. So that'll be expensive. It'll be more of a, you know, year's worth, a few years worth of pro uh, project. It won't be a overnight kind of thing. We'll be setting up a website and stuff like that, um, but we do have an employee identification number, which is important if you're going to be, you know, sort of writing it off on your taxes. If you were going to make a larger donation, so you could get whatever you needed from me. And if you just wanted to make a small donation, if you wanted to buy T-shirts, anything like that, you can also contact me. And um, you know, we have a, a corporate bank account for this, and we're kind of just running things through that. So I can be your point man on anything else you need, uh, donations-wise. You know, I mean, I just think just that uh, these trucks, I, I think we we obviously hold a special place in our heart for them because we're firefighters, but I think it's especially important that they were trucks owned and operated by the town of Foxborough Fire Department. Like that's, you don't see that every day. That That's really cool to kind of go look at a truck and know that it was in the fire station on the common almost a hundred years ago. And, um, they really are a piece of town history. You know, I think that's why we find it so important to preserve that. And I think we're just looking for any and all help we can get in doing that. Made me want to become a firefighter. My, my grandfather was a firefighter. So uh, the town I grew up in, Ashland, Massachusetts, my grandfather was one of the first career firefighters there. Uh, he held the rank of captain. Um, of the first career fire department uh, and he retired in the late 70s uh, so I think I just always had uh, you know I always had um, I always had that to look up to and to aspire to so that definitely drew me that definitely drew me to the career but also uh, the excitement of not knowing no, not knowing what you're gonna do every day um, it's not a sit behind the desk job um, we're, we're out we're interacting with the public um, we're trying to, uh, you know, and we're always trying to make a situation better we're always trying to help somebody um, whether it's through um, whether it's through um, site visits and uh, providing information, whether it's uh, medical or fire related, or actually responding to true emergencies uh, to help somebody who's possibly having a bad day or very well having a bad day, um, you know, have a better outcome, you know, due to our, due to our efforts.
Uh, I think what, personally for me, what made me want to become a firefighter is my, my grandfather was a firefighter here in Foxborough in the 60s and 70s. He worked at the Foxborough Company, part of the Foxborough Company Fire Brigade, and he was a call firefighter here in town. And uh, subsequently, my uncle became a full-time firefighter here, still is. He works here. Um, you know, it's kind of a family business. I have a cousin that works here as well. So, you know, you'll find a lot of family connections in the, in the, in the fire service, I think, more, more, the, more so than most other, um, you know, professions. I wish I had like a perfect answer for you, but honestly, since for as long as I can remember, I've been making my dad take me to fire stations so I could look at the trucks and stuff like that when I was, you know, two, three, four years old. It's just always something I wanted to do. And um, I never really lost it. And, uh, you know, I went to college, I studied fire science, and as soon as I was done, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to get on a fire department and, you know, be a firefighter. And when I went to paramedic school, I kind of fell in love with that as well, the, the medical aspect of it. It's challenging and very rewarding, and, you know, it's the bulk of what we do now, and it's, it's kind of a great way for us to just add a completely different but kind of exactly the same service to what we do, and uh, it's an awesome job. I'm really, really happy.